guys and welcome for episode 4 of the PvP Basics uh, which is the series that I'm trying to do for all the beginners and the returning players but not only of course for everyone who is interested in PvP um, so today the, the episode will be a little bit different there will be no cuts and no edits to it uh, there will be straight up gameplay and a small analysis as we are getting closer and closer to the micro and macro play of the of the play style that I have and like I said in the very beginning those series will begin with the very uh, basic fundamentals for PvP such as the weapons, the classes and of course in episode 3 as we discuss the different combination of different classes in a group uh, but now we are already going into the to the deeper uh, understanding of the decision making and how to approach the fights in different scenarios and of course I will be mainly talking about the fire mage and the different combinations of the fire staff uh, in today's episode specifically that would be with ice gauntlet but in the future we will take a look on OPRs and wars as well so the combinations can vary and they can be also with blunderbuss and rapier and so on so what I wanted to do in this episode is just to give a glimpse of how I personally play arenas and how I approach each and every match so you can see what goes through my mind during the matches and of course how I'm managing to overcome my opponents for the most part and uh, yeah just basically it. So let's take a look at this match. Um, as you can see of the name of the video, we are two fire staffs and uh, one melee against two fire staffs and one bow. Now, as you may know, I am not the biggest fan of the bows, uh, spe specifically in arenas, because I believe that they are the weakest enemies uh, due to the fact that they cannot support uh, their teammates and they are not that great on short distance, but that's another topic. So just for the start, I just want to note something really important for me and that's the bar that I'm using the four consumables. I'm not going for mana potions, I'm always going for some kind of a defensive uh, pot if I can call it like this. So I always load hearty meal and you will see later why. Uh, health potions, regen potions and then of course on the last slot I go between oak flesh if I have mainly physical opponents or infused fire potions if I have a lot of fire staffs. So starting off the clip uh, you will see that I'm always taking the middle route. Uh, this is due to the fact that I believe you are spending too much time if you try to go on the two sides uh, and basically you are making yourself and your team vulnerable to, to the enemies specifically if they have range. Um, the same goes if you go under uh, under the middle so yeah this is I believe the best thing to do here in this specific arena is just to approach the, the center and then when you know what are the opponents because as you can see that's the the first round as soon as you know your opponents then you can already uh, try to think about what you're gonna do in the following moments so every time when I approach I try to be careful with the uh, flying fireballs or something else as well like grenades uh, and then as soon as I get to the middle at this point I'm already trying to take a fast look on all three opponents uh, and see what are their you know weapons and what I should expect to to come from their side and as you can see my teammates are nowhere to be found uh, behind me they are still in the back so this means that I'm the first and main contact here and I should be super careful about what I'm doing and uh, of course I can easily die if I get targeted uh, from all three at the same time as you can also see I already popped my uh, oak flesh uh, preemptively if they have like melees and let's say they play with sword and shield so therefore I'm already protected uh, if they have any so let's see what happens I drop a pylon and then I'm already looking into their their enemy composition so as we can see they have a fire mage who is almost at the same uh, level of push as we did but their other two teammates are super far back 
as you can see there is like a guy already back on the stairs so he cannot support with anything apart from some basic attacks we cannot even tell what is his class and this guy here i believe is also a fire mage so if this guy is a fire mage and this guy is a fire mage it's also safe to assume that that's the ball player but it doesn't really matter which one is which to be honest because they are super far from their teammate and as you can see my melee player is already here as well so we are two players right next to each other and this guy is just alone and as you can see as well he is already casting his burnout which can end up in two scenarios the first scenario is that he will cancel his burnout and he will remain here because he sees that we are two and our third guy is just here outside of your screen I think you see the the staff um, that's the first scenario but the second scenario is that the guy will go for it and he will charge through us now this means that he will apply some small kind of a damage but then he will be ending up behind us alone without the support of his teammates so that's like extremely risky to do so let's see how he will proceed in this case I dodge his attack so of course I, I have to uh, how, somehow respect that even though the damage of the burnout is not that great and as you can see I'm getting some cheap damage from the other two guys which is still fine and straight up I'm applying a ice wall that will cover not all but like half of the way for any of those two guys that are here if they want to approach and assist their teammate which is now invisible on this uh, on this picture so the thing is if we now turn on this guy and and straight up go for him because our third player is here we are two here and we will basically go and, and be three against one this guy will die instantly and his teammates also don't have big of a choice to to do because they have to basically come on the platform and they would be forced to play on the right side of the platform because here I have my pylon and here I have my shower so this means that they can only play on the other side of the platform so let's see what's happening here I'm straight up turning my attention to the other guy that just flew by with his burnout and I see that my other teammate which in this case is Amir Dark Evil uh, he's already fighting with him so what I'm gonna do here is to follow up with my burnout and just go for the guy now the, it's a bit questionable why this guy is leaving the fight um, due to the fact that he's full HP and he has also stamina uh, while this guy if you can see it he has like just around 15 to 20 stamina at max um, and he also have like a plague which will uh, decrease his uh, healing effects so anyway I'm going for the guy I'm straight up hitting him with everything that I have and now Amir which is the guy that left few seconds ago he's coming as well with the burnout uh, so basically he pulled back but then he instantly turned around and came to support us in this in this uh, fight so as you can see we are already one kill ahead he, he managed to finish the guy and straight up just like around 10 or 15 seconds after the beginning of the match uh, we are already uh, I'm really bad with writing but yeah we are already against two players instead of three because this guy just misplayed in this current situation now what happens from here on of course you have a huge advantage so like I said you're gonna aim straight up to the platform as you can see this guy even though my shower is already gone from there my shower was on this side and I had a pylon here um, the pylon most likely could be there if it's not killed but the shower would definitely not be there as it's standing just for seven seconds but still it was enough to push this guy on this side and that's basically where we are aiming together with the with the other guy and and he would receive quite a lot of damage so straight up two hits from both of us and then as you can see uh, my my pylon is still alive here but like I said the shower is not here so seven seven seconds passed and basically the shower is gone so he was forced to come on this side just because of the pylon he received a little bit of damage he went to the other side and 
then straight up you either die by the pylon or you're gonna get hit from us and you're gonna die your other option here if you are this guy would be to jump down but that would just give you like few seconds more and basically the outcome at the end will be the same so at this point we are already three against one and there is almost no chance specifically if, if there is like two or more ranged and the, the round is over so now as I know that they have um, their composition as you can see here I know that they have fire staffs they have two fire staffs so due to the fact that the first, first round I was playing with oak flesh it was from my previous match I straight up change the infused fire potions with the oak flesh so as you can see this is something that I really do a lot and I basically play all my matches like this my first round is always uh, how to say a scouting scouting round just to see the enemies and to to get the feeling of the match just so I know what they will what they will do and how they will react and again as you can see here I already pop my fire potion because I will enter here the the middle area the the circle area in the middle and if you see as well there is like a small fireball um, that is coming straight towards us so we would want to either go on the left side so we don't get hit by it or if we have a ally here or the fireball is coming straight to us we would have to dodge definitely in order to avoid the damage so here I just decide to go a little bit to the left enter the middle ground and as you can see from here we already have advantage due to the players positioning now you might not see it as such but I would just explain it and maybe it's just my feeling but there are two players that are standing in the back are still not on the platform and the only guy that's on the platform is piggy x at the moment so this means that I can safely apply my pylon on the right side somewhere here and even if I get hit by them this guy who is a melee and definitely will be a problem for them will have his free time to approach closer and to apply pressure so let's see how the things are playing out in this case so I place my pylon they don't even aim to hit me due to the fact that they respect the guy that's coming from here to them he's just walking towards them but they have to respect that and as you can see all three of them are now going backwards instead of forward and of course that's the that's the correct thing to do don't get me wrong they are three ranged players so they don't have anything to do with this guy but now what happens from here it's even more interesting because if you can see it now they are standing all in a in a small area which is this road here and now they have again two options we have those stairs down I'm really good with drawing so they have two options there are three players here and they have a choice do they go this way so down those stairs do they get this way the other stairs or they push back or they split so the thing is any of those would be super risky for them and why is that the case if they all go here and they go inside this room they would potentially die because they don't have an exit or place to maneuver and to kite so that's not a good option if they all go to this way they would have to really be careful about AOE damage uh, because they would be all at the same place same goes for those stairs as well so the best idea could be if they split but they mechanically alone for themselves have to be really good otherwise they would be picked up and what I mean by picked up is just to play the video and I will show you so as you can see one guy already went down on those stairs if we look a little bit further we will see that this guy also tries to get to those stairs uh, sorry the last arrow remained so now we have one guy who is here one guy going down and one guy going there but the thing is that due to the fact that they were all three here in this small corridor they already received quite a lot of damage this guy not so much because he managed to dodge away but those two were heavily affected by the damage 
And now from this situation for you as a, as a range player from here, regardless if you are a fire mage or a bow or anything else that's ranged and does like a good damage, for you it's quite easy to make the correct choice. This is your target number one. This is the person who has to die before recovering any HP. And as you can see here, this is exactly what I'm gonna do as well. I'm straight up charging my burnout and whatever his choice is, I would catch him. He cannot get away from this position anymore. It's, it's just over. It's just about delaying it, but at the end the result will be the same. And again, 10 seconds after the round, I don't know exactly, I think it starts at 155. Um, 10 or 15 seconds after the round, they are already with the man down and, and the advantage is is towards us against it's uh, again it's three against two so from here on is just uh, you know follow up like crowd controls and damage on single targets uh, the other guy is trying to kite a little bit back but then he comes back uh, from the stairs he's in between three people uh, one two and me here three there is no way that you will ever win a fight like this if you are in the middle of three people and then your teammate is somewhere in the room there hiding trying to recover some HP so basically this guy is now dead and of course uh, we're gonna go as three and, and just we're gonna chase the, the last guy and at some point he will just die and this is something like really basic and, and really how to say logical in my opinion but I see that a lot of people don't make the necessary right decisions and I feel like they are just following their instinct of hitting the closest player which is not always the great thing to do you should always um, prioritize the classes and prioritize what is the most important and valuable thing to do at the certain moment because even in some cases that they have, let's say, a healer and many of the people would say, yeah, the healer is the most important, that's not always the case. If they have a bow player or a musket player, it would be easier for you to kill one of those instead of trying to kill the healer while the bow or the musket player is shooting at you. Believe me, it would be a better choice to do. So let's just look uh, quickly at the last round. So as we saw even before, uh, we are entering already, I already had my uh, fire protection potion already used. This guy this time is almost together with us and now we are entering three, uh, this circle, circle area of the arena. Uh, we already see that they are shooting some of their projectiles but they are missing. So that's why make sure that you keep your projectiles in a, in a way that you're gonna be sure that you hit otherwise you would waste your abilities. And now, as we can see, this guy already had enough and now he changed to a great axe, which is pretty good. Uh, it's really nice to have a melee uh, when you have that many range. So it's better to have two range than one melee. But the problem here is that he's opening with a gravel. Um, I don't mind the openings with gravel, but the problem is that any good player that has full stamina, as you can see, I, I, I'm at full stamina, but even if I don't have full, let's say I have half stamina, any good player will always react to your grab well and it will simply be dodged out. Like you will never hit anyone with this ability if that's your opening. You, you should just try to put pressure without it and then when the people are like one dodge away from gray barring or they are already gray barred, then you throw the gravel so you can lock them in place. So as you can see, he throws the gravel. I'm dodging it, uh, even though I'm going in a in a way that it's on the gravel's path. And then I'm instantly applying my my shower, which I will place like this, which technically means that if this player enters this area where is his gravel. Uh, there will be no follow-up from anyone regardless that they are ranged or he will be able to escape because there will be ice. Um, so let's see how this plays out. So I'm putting ice, he manages to sneak through uh, but now the problem for him is that he cannot get out of there and at the same time their bow player is still so far away that he cannot assist with anything 
their fire mage is now isolated alone in between two players again uh, between me and the melee he is already half HP so at this point I guess you already know what will be the outcome of this the fire mage will instantly get burned out he will die and then okay he didn't die but he's like 1 HP okay yeah pretty good and from here on we have quite a big advantage so they are also managing to make some kind of a counter attack because as we can see my teammate actually died here from the Gravwell guy and they also managed to come back down to chase me and put pressure as you can see I'm already on half HP and now of course I used my Entomb so from here it would be a little bit tricky for me to survive even though uh, I had the Entomb so I will go up and this is the moment where I usually say to people like why I love to play um, I love to play with hearty meals so if you don't know guys whenever you have a hearty meal in your quick slot you can always eat the food without any cooldown there is no cooldown on the food and the thing is whenever you eat food for the next 20 seconds you will regenerate really fast HP the only problem with this is that if you receive a hit the HP regeneration will be cancelled so at this point I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna use some kind of food of course I'm trying to do as much as damage as possible to assist my guy there who is still alive I even use my bio bomb if you see it here um, in order to put a little bit of pressure on those guys because they would not be able to regenerate HP and from here on I will just turn around drop down and now I will try to eat food so if you didn't see it I clicked it already once and if you look down here you will have this buff it's actually not even 20 seconds it's 25 I believe due to the fact of the food trophy that was uh, a reward from the Turkey event so basically for the next 25 seconds if I'm not hit I will regenerate quite a lot of HP and from here on is just about waiting game I just need to recover some HP I can still use abilities and we can see here that this guy comes uh, from upper to finish me because he don't want me to recover all my HP I already managed to recover one third and here it's really key moment um, this is like a moment where you can outplay uh, basically other enemies and, and this is the one of the many examples of course so whenever you see a fire staff burning out because he is currently in the in the very beginning of a burnout uh, animation let me let me just go a little bit back like here and let's see so here I already see his hand and staff going backwards and he will charge his animation towards me whenever you see that guys the best way to counter that is either to hit the person with something during the air time of the ability and then to follow up with dodge forward in order to go through him because he cannot make a 180 turn he can make like a 180 but it has to be super wide and he cannot make insta 180 so basically you either dodge forward or if you know the total distance of the burnout you can dodge backwards and you might not get hit or just be at the edge of it so as you can see here I will go a little bit back uh, I'm literally doing exactly this come on okay so I'm seeing him I'm throwing my fireball because he cannot that uh, dodge sorry and then I'm instantly burning out because he will be locked in animation while ending his burnout as you can see here I will just go like this so I hit him with a fireball then I dodge back and now from this point I'm already in animation myself as you can see the stave is is behind is behind I don't know is it called stave or, or stuff I don't know actually when you when you talk about it like this I don't know I'm getting confused anyway English is not my native language so sorry for the stupid words that I'm using but uh, but yeah from here on he's locked in a small animation and even if even if he hits me with something I'm basically free to use my burnout and then 
I can just go this way. If I still don't kill him, maybe he can dodge. Uh, and then I can hide myself because I'm also low on HP. And of course, I didn't, I didn't have stamina because I had to dodge his burnout. So as we can see, I burn out. He hits me, but he dies for it. And from here on, it's two against one. And actually, my guy on the other side wins the round. Now in this next clip I will show you a different composition of players because many people believe that the healer is the strongest thing in the arenas which I am not really um, agreeing with. Of course if the healer is really good and I'm talking about like really really good healers then it's indeed a, a really tough job to, to kill them and to also maintain uh, the damage output from their teammates while they are healing them. Uh, but indeed, uh, in my opinion, the healer is not that great in arenas just because of the fact that if you are good at kiting and you can prolong the match, you can basically get to a point where their healing effects are increasingly reduced and therefore at the end of the, of the, of the match they are just useless. Uh, completely useless so they cannot survive your damage. So in this case, we have two fire mages. Uh, I am playing fire mage, this guy is fire mage and we have a healer in the back as you can see his uh, life staff is glowing so now we still don't know what are our opponents and as you can see again I'm with my oak flesh starting with it and of course if they have uh, fire staffs or a lot of burn damage maybe blunderbuss or something like that I will be considering to, to change to fire protection. So we go forward, we use the Oak Flesh, and as you can see here, maybe it's not really visible, but let me go again. As you can see here, I already turned my camera in a way to see the enemies from distance and to see their weapons like this. You see, I'm pointing down towards the ground with my mouse so I can already see the enemies and I would be prepared for what they might use on us. And from here on, I already see that they have two melees. As you can see, this guy here is a sword and shield. And this guy here is a great axe. Um, this guy at the back is a life staff. But this, I only see it now because I'm looking at the recorded video. If, if this is life, I would not be able to see this guy on the back. Just because of the fact that I'm like my eyes are just monitoring the closest targets. And therefore, I'm just interested in those two that are already entering the circle area of the arena. So let's see how this plays out. Uh, they enter the arena, they split up, and therefore I'm playing it extremely passive, like placing the pylon here. Uh, that's the worst P that I can draw. So I'm placing the pylon and then I'm instantly putting shower around it, uh, just because it would basically give me a small safe haven here and push them on the sides only here and here are the possible ways to approach me without touching the eyes in the front. Um, this of course I do it just because it's a first round and I need to see their playstyle. I need to know how much damage they have, uh, what is their abilities even uh, and stuff like this. So we see that our guy is already close to them, our healer is getting threatened, uh, he's pulling back He's already in a grav well and this already looks like a bad position for all our team because my mage is here which is quite deep uh, compared to our two other players. My healer is in a, in a grav well so maybe they can follow up with damage on him from, from both sides. And I'm here without a uh, shower, without pylon and I cannot support them with anything. So from here on, it's all about luck and, and kiting, let's say. So let's see how it plays out. This guy decides to go in, but he goes on me uh, instead of the healer. And here I make like a crucial mistake, which a lot of new players also do. But uh, thankfully, I'm playing with Ice Gauntlet, so I'm managing to get out. So here I'm already uh, wasting some stamina without any reason. And here I'm making another dodge, which is reason uh, uh, without any reason, and I'm left with 34 stamina. From here on, this guy approaches, so he will be in the next second next to me, and I would have only 34 stamina. This means that I'm in a big, big problem, 
because now everything that is threatening me and I want to dodge it away like a damage ability or a heavy attack or whatever would put me in gray bar status and this is exactly what happens the guy uses his maelstrom and I have to dodge that I have to respect that but the problem that is is that like I said the, the stamina is not enough and therefore I'm gray barring here if they have a good um, follow-up let's say and they are skillful enough players from here on I would be either dead either really close to death because without uh, without any stamina even the entomb will not save me if they focus me fast enough so here what they do is this guy that managed to get me in gray bar straight up charges with the hammer heavy attack in order to you know to to hit me for a for a big chunk of damage fortunately enough i'm using my entomb on time so as you can see i'm already entombed and i will not get any damage from it but the problem is that this guy completely ignores the fact that i have gray bar he completely ignores the fact that he was here and instead of coming towards me with the great sword and a lot of different staggers that he has he would basically kill me in two seconds but this is exactly the, the point that I wanted to say before is that he is blindlessly going towards the healer for no reason why would you go for the healer when I'm gray barred and you are two heavy hitters there is there is literally no reason to do that so let's see the heavy attacks from the hammer are breaking my eyes but the problem is that he is alone so he cannot do much more and now my stamina is almost back I have 104 out of 110 from here on I will just escape and I will recover myself with a potion and then basically the start is just continuing I'm already you know it's like it's just starting for me um, here I'm using a ice shower just to protect my my teammate so he can have at least a bit of time to escape uh, like here for example like I see that he has a, um, a flamethrower so that means that if he wants to apply damage he have to play close to them so the only thing that I can help him with is just to put an ice here or ice here but here it will be super small uh, gap so better to make it here so he can cross and get a little bit of distance movement speed and if they decide to follow him they would receive rent and, and slow instead um, so let's see I put this ice maybe not the best way because there is a there is a small gap here I, I placed it like that so this gap here maybe this guy will not catch it uh, and our healer as well puts a sacred so our other flamethrower runs away and then here is the most key moment of this round uh, the two minis decided to go for the for the fire staff they decided that they will chase the fire staff which means that their healer which is here I believe uh, will remain alone and their healer most likely most likely will die if he is not skilled enough and why is that the case It's because I have two weapons with uh, play crits I have bio bomb which is still not generated but most likely I will generate it close enough to be used or even if I have it in another case and therefore it's not a, a fair trade to go for um, fire staff to trade with uh, with the healer but let's see how it how it goes uh, let's play it and see so I'm already starting to apply pressure to their healer both melees are going down for the fire staff and his best choice here would be to jump off and follow his melees that would be his best choice but unfortunately he's like I said not skilled enough and basically he's getting scared because he's almost out of stamina he just get hit for like one quarter of his HP and his decision here is to play upstairs around the, the, the heels that he have and he's looking basically for his sacred he came from here and he would make a full turn up to here in order to get back into his sacred but as you can see he is already super low and he doesn't even have stamina and at this certain time my mage managed to pull up and come back in 
just to finish the job and kill the healer. And now at this point, we are two mages plus a healer against two bruisers. This is most definitely a win for us. The only, um, the only way for them to win is a really good coordinated hits in between each other. Uh, but this, of course, in arena where you play mostly solo, it's, it's hard to happen. Uh, but yeah. So here they managed to kill the mage after all because he was uh, still low HP. Maybe he's not using um, the heart immunes like I do. Uh, here it's also one really key small thing that you can do. So you see that, for example, your teammate doesn't matter if it's a healer or anyone. Uh, he's coming up the stairs and he's chased by one or two or whatever, three people, let's say. The best thing that you can do as a fire ice mage if you play with the same skills is to place the pylon and then straight up put shower on it. Like on the, on the circle of the pylon. Because this is the pylon circle and everyone who steps in that circle, like a little bit closer though, everyone who steps in that circle, let me make it just a little bit more clear, like this will be damaged not only by the projectile of the pylon but also by the pool's area that is inside it. And this is extremely high damage. It can hit up to 3k if it crits and many people just disregard it but that's like... It, it's just too much and by the time they realize it would be too late. So let's see, if I put the eyes they are also rendered. So they stay super close to the pylon, they receive plague, of course they are heavies so they don't get that much of a damage, but if those are light players, they would be already dead. Um, so here they turn on me, which I don't really understand the idea. Okay, now they turn again on the healer. And then I'm just looking for a place where I can assist my healer, but at the same time I can nuke either both if they are placed together or one of them. And as you can see, my pylon is almost ready. Uh, my my deadly frost is also ready so I'm just preparing to see where the healer will play and as you can see it's almost identical situation the healer is coming down this time he is again chased I'm placing down the pylon I'm putting shower and basically he has to just dance around the ice and everything will be fine so let's see we put ice we root the guy the other guy jumps as well and as you can see, they receive quite a lot of damage in this frosted area. Even though they are heavies, they receive a lot of damage. And, and it just goes extremely quick. And now at the end, of course, it's, a, it's a 2v1. I have a healer, he doesn't have anyone. And basically, he will, he will just die here. Um, so we can just skip uh, for, the, for the next round. Let's just see how it goes. Maybe they can do something about it. Maybe they will change their strategy. Uh, maybe they will maybe focus the healer instead. Uh, so let's see. Now again, we, we see here uh, that one of the guys is entering on the right side and the one of the guys is entering from the left side. But the problem is that their healer is super far back. This is so far back that if we start hitting this guy, uh, he will not be able to hit. That's too much of a distance. There is there is not enough distance. And now we see that he's already trying to come closer. Uh, but here at this certain stage of the of the of the fight, I already saw last time that my damage is enough to put their healer in a big pressure. And and if I go really hard on him, I would be able to solo him. So as you can see here, I already throw my fireball aiming at the healer and I managed to hit him for around 4000 uh, 4, damage. Like combined everything, that's around one third of his HP. So from here on, my goal would be to basically go from this side and try to approach the healer so I can avoid uh, bypassing the melee who can start like staggering me, CCing me and stuff like this. So I go on the side, I manage to hit him second time and now if you look at the debuff bar, he's already with four stacks of fire, one plague and I have still my pillar on which will be 20% oh my god that's not 20 for sure. Uh, this will be 20% more damage from the passive with the pillar if I manage to hit it of course. So he doesn't have a pot, I go with burnout as well. Oh my god, what did I do? Wait, no. 
Okay, sorry about that guys, but my fat fingers press the skip button instead of the pause. So let's just go back again. So one hit, two hits, four stacks, make it five. It still doesn't show though because I just hit him. Maybe it will apply in a second. But this is like a full hit with the burnout spin, uh, the 180 spin with the burnout. And now he is like in a really, really tough situation. Yes, he has stamina, so maybe he can get lucky with some dodges. But if he doesn't dodge on the correct timings, he would be instantly dead. So let's see how this one plays out. I hit him, I miss my pillar, which is not that good. But then I managed to hit him with the, with the bio bomb. And now, of course, I'm trying to, to make some stacks of burn again. Then I still follow him. But unfortunately, I didn't kill him fast enough and now he is able to just kite me here uh, on his sacred. And of course, on the sacred, it, it's almost impossible to kill him. So at this point, I'm already realizing that I didn't do the necessary. I missed my pillar when I had to hit it. And at the same time, my guys failed and they basically died from the two bruisers. Now at this point, you have two, uh, two options. The one is just to stay AFK, um, just to let them win because it's a, it's a 1v3. If they are 3 milis, maybe you have some kind of a chance uh, because you can try to like do a lot of kiting and maybe you can kill someone uh, just to get it down to 1v2 or 1v1. Uh, but if they have a healer, it's almost impossible to be honest. I'm still trying to push the limits of course. I'm just trying to, to do some tricky, you know, parkour shit, uh, but unfortunately it doesn't really happen. And uh, basically I'm still getting chased. Uh, not much to be done against two heavies. I'm losing quite a lot of HP on each trait. And basically they, at the end, they got me and they kill me. So even, even I made a, like a horrible decision to, to use my rune, which I don't have for the next round. It's a really stupid decision but uh, it, it can happen so we go for the next one again they are entering uh, same as the last two rounds they are entering on the two sides one guy on the left one guy on the right i place the pylon here uh, waiting to see their reaction let's say placing the the defensive uh, let's say shower but this time something is different and this is that my other mage is here this time he realizes that if we both go on the healer, we would have enough damage to finish him off. So let's see how it plays out from here on. Uh, we see that one melee dropped down because he is no longer on the platform, or at least I don't see him if he is behind this uh, pillar. And this melee decides to also go for my healer. So we have a limited time in which we can damage their healer and we basically start to, to hit him. Now we already see that he is half HP, he is almost dead and of course at this point in time you have 5 stacks of fire on you, I have my pillar and this time you are out of stamina. It shows stamina but he was out of stamina because he dodged just before that. So basically he is gone. And now at this time on our side our healer just managed to run away from the heavies and just to kite them enough time, which is around 15 seconds. Uh, and, and from here on, it's 3v2. So technically, the, the match is basically over. Uh, they might get a kill or two because of bad plays or, you know, uh, not respecting them. But uh, there is not much to happen if, if that's like, you know, actual match with uh, people who know what they're doing. So there is just no chance for two heavy melees to, to kill uh, two mages with a healer in this scenario. Uh, one guy is already dead, the other guy is just spamming heavy attacks, but that, that just takes a little bit more time. And he would be dead also in like a few seconds or so. And yeah, there we go. He's one HP and quite good dodging though. And he's dead. So if we go on the last round, uh, most likely the tendencies will keep uh, their melees will aim to our, you know, to our healer, and uh, basically 
they, they will aim to, to kill him. By the way, looking at the stats, uh, something to note here. Of course, I'm not flexing with my damage or whatever. But if you look at the damage from our healer and the healing that he does, I'm not saying that he is bad or, or he is good or whatever. But just something to note that numbers not always say the correct picture. Their healer has... This is around 12 times more the damage and 2 times more the healing. But unfortunately he didn't do well because he just died. It's all about the burst damage in, uh, in New World guys. If you die in 5 seconds it doesn't matter how much damage you put out or how much healing you put out. This guy just managed to kite around without doing nothing. Uh, just to, to give us a little bit of time for me and the other fire staff so we can kill their healer and, and that's all it matters. So <clears throat> just to let you know for, for your future games to, to have that in mind. When you look at numbers of course they mean something uh, but it, it's not always the numbers that you, hit, uh, that you should uh, aim about and, and, uh, and think about people's skill level just by, by numbers. So as we can see here, the opening of the enemy is completely different from what we saw the last three rounds. This time, their healer decides to go on the right side, which is technically their left, and their melee is here. Unfortunately, we cannot see the other melee, but I believe it's here down with the healer. So this, th this now puts us in a spot where we have to choose. Do we fight this guy here and try to kill him because he is alone and his healer cannot really heal unless he comes up to this platform because he will not have vision on him? Or we kill the healer first because this guy will not be able to follow up that fast and to come down there. Now, if we look at it like this way, if this guy is light player or medium player, it would be easy for us to just turn on him and kill him in around 6 seconds. The problem is that this guy is heavy, which means that we will not be able to kill him that fast and at this time we're gonna burn all of our abilities and burst damage and his healer will just come to this platform, use a sacred or a heal and he would be back to full HP. So instead what we decide to do from here is just to go down on the healer. Meanwhile, I don't know if you saw it, but there was a melee just passing here by. Uh, so basically the two melees again will go for our healer. So from here on, our aim is towards the, the healer, the enemy healer. I'm getting here a shockwave, a spin. I don't really care much. And now I'm basically going for their healer again. Uh, he's already net shotted. I don't know if you saw it. Let me go back. So... At this stage here, I hit him with burnout and now I think my teammate, yep, this, you see those yellow circles? Those yellow circles are the animation for a net shot getting on a target, getting a hit. At this stage, I already know that this guy has to be focused completely in order to get killed because every dodge that he does will be reduced uh, stamina recovery and basically he's, he's just walking dead. So from here on we focus him, we burn his stamina down, I even use my rune, I don't even care about anything and that's 15 to 20 seconds after the round, the, the healer is completely gone, our healer again is getting chased but this time they managed to kill him and again as I told you, you see your teammate coming, it doesn't matter if it's a healer or not, you put a nice shower just so you can give them free time just so you can give them this small boost of speed so they can proceed running while the enemy will get stuck for a second and then from there on would be you know um, would be easier to kite unfortunately we were not fast enough to help our guy and he died now at this point we have two bruisers that are heavy and we have why I'm always writing W instead of two bruisers against two mages, two fire staffs. He is playing with blunderbuss, I'm playing with ice. Their only way to kill us is to dump everything on a single target if they manage to CC him. What I mean by this is reap, grab well, knock down by a hammer or stuff like this. This is their only win condition 
while our win condition is to either split them apart and play two 1v1s or if we can manage to kite them and let's say we, we just trade a little bit damage uh, for HP then run away the other guy trades a little bit of damage and so on so I will just play it from here I will let you guys watch they decide to go on him for a bit so I'm trying to apply as much damage as I can because at the moment I'm free to do so and there at this point he's losing now at this stage I'm in a really tough spot because I'm almost half HP I just lost the dodge because I had to go upwards and my teammate just died there is nobody to heal me unless I use my of course potions and, and health and the only win condition that I have is just to kite while doing some cheap damage to them because they are heavies so let's see how it goes I will try to kite up this is not that hard of a jump but in the middle of a fight it's a bit tricky and if somebody hits you you're gonna miss it so I'm going up and straight up placing a pylon here because if any of them or both of them manage to make the jump they would be straight up hit by the pylon while they have the animation of going up while that I'm here uh, I don't know why I'm putting a pylon but alright my name is Peter so I can place my P there um, and if they go up I would have free damage my pylon will have free damage and basically I can gain a lot of stuff here so I'm placing the pylon one guy managed to get up basically we got lucky as well because this guy is already half HP and from here on I'm starting straight up the damage because this is a 1v1 now I don't I don't even care what will happen because the other guy is super far away he cannot help him at all the guy will start his cross cut I will make sure to dodge away from it and at this point I managed to burst him down before his teammate comes at this point the only thing that he can do is to start chase me and to try to finish off because I'm super low HP I have four seconds left with the slow and not much not much to do to be honest but thankfully I have uh, my frost here as you can see it so let's see how the things play out I'm starting to run I place a defensive wall of ice and of course again eating my food buff because it would give me 25 seconds of recovery if I don't get hit and since he is melee he cannot hit me it's just not possible so I will just keep the distance I will try to hit him of course with basic attacks to apply a little bit of burn maybe a little bit of play crits uh, so he can have like a reduced uh, reduced healing effects and now he's trying to kill my uh, my pylon which is the correct thing to do and here I almost completely fuck it up because I did three mistakes in a matter of a second now I will show you what are the mistakes the first one is that I didn't dodge um, the initial charge so when he was charging I have to either dodge straight away uh, so I don't get the hit or I don't have to dodge you know at all the problem is that I didn't dodge I got the hit and then I dodged after the hit so it was a bit unlucky but at the same time it was horrible um, then I dodged too early preemptively for his grab well and I realized that it was too early so I had to dodge a second time just to get away from the grab well and not get stuck into it which means that I will basically lose all my stamina and I'm be uh, on, on zero stamina but again I got lucky because my burnout is out on cooldown and it's ready to be used so straight up I use my burnout and then manage to get away on the other side of the arena and again starting to heal up with potions with food uh, here I already know that in 25 seconds it's 27 but yeah around 20 to 30 seconds uh, the ring of fire will start to close in so I need to go on the platform and I need to fight the guy 1v1 but the problem is if I want to go from here with the jump that I showed you a bit earlier he would have a huge advantage over me as I will be climbing towards him with animation lock 
So I just decide to go from here, but then I realize that and I go for the safer route, which is on the other side. Now, of course, he's playing passively because he's a heavy melee guy and he knows that the ring of fire is coming. I have to go and fight him in close battle, which is beneficial for him. So that's why he's hiding behind this column here and just waiting for me to get close. So as I'm approaching, I will place my pylon on a safe spot so it will help me to deal some damage, throw some fire staff abilities, try to dodge as many as his abilities and then of course he kills the pylon straight away. This is really key because the pylon like I said does a lot of damage if you just leave it there to, to stay. Uh, again I didn't dodge on time the charge but at least I dodged the, uh, the grab well, this time was better dodge. And now I have my pylon back, he tries to kill it. This is also a small mistake that I did because here uh, I make a dodge for technically no reason because he is going for the other side and he is not applying any pressure to me. But even though I, I make a dodge, which is a little bit of bad habit but I will not go into details for that. And now I'm with 20 stamina and in order to dodge this attack because I don't know if it will be towards me or towards the pylon. We were basically close to each other so I cannot know which one will be prioritized. He prioritizes the pylon but this puts me in a tough spot because I had to dodge and I go grey bar. So here I instantly use my um, ice shower so I can gain a small fraction of a second that I will be invulnerable. And then I instantly trigger it again so I can receive the fortification from the ability when you trigger it with the left mouse button and actually I will also deal a little bit of damage towards him. And now here it's a, it's a bit cringe fest because we both run to the same direction from each other for no reason and then the final hit he went for a shockwave which was not really necessary but whatever he did here would be, would be the end. And with that guys I want to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the series and of course if you have anything to have as a feedback please let me know in the comments or join the discord in the link description so we can share and of course discuss different things related to PvP but not only. As the holidays are approaching and Christmas is behind the corner I want to wish you a really nice Christmas and New Year and of course be sure that there will be some content but due to the fact that I will be on a short vacation I might be not every day in New World. Thank you guys for supporting both channels here in YouTube and of course the live stream on Kick. That's really appreciated from my side and I really really want to say thank you for all those months that you supported me. I would make my best to come up with some more content for the upcoming season in New World and of course for some other games as the next year is approaching with some other releases. Thank you once again and I will see you guys on the next one.